He's the one coming out. <laughs> Reload, you hit him. We are here on a scouting trip. I have a muzzleloader tag this fall. We got here pretty late last night. This morning we're headed up into the high country and just spotted our first bachelor group and I was all pumped. We pulled up the scope and they're all babies. Spike, two points, little guys, but shortly after that I glassed back behind us and saw this big typical buck, nice, heavy. His velvet was being lit up by the sunlight. I glimpsed him and within 10 seconds he'd walked behind a patch of trees and was out of sight. Things are already looking up. Um, that's amazing, already finding bucks. We're only probably half an hour into our trip. So we're gonna keep going up into this high country, check out this road network up here, this trail system, and see if we can find some more bucks. Just got done glassing these basins for the morning behind us. We are going to head to a new spot, but we got hungry and opened up one of our backcountry fuel boxes. We have this beef biltong, which this is really big in like South Africa, things like that, and had a lot of it. It's really delicious, actually. It's quite a bit different than in your regular jerky you're used to. It's good stuff. It's got big old beams. He's a three by four. Is he? Mm-hmm. This post doing something on his three points. It's trying to split, but I don't think it will. I mean, it's a mature buck. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Wow, that was intense. We were just barely glassing all these basins and decided to wrap it up for the night and head back out. And we were going down the trail and this buck is right there at 10 yards. We just froze and stared at him. We got the camera out. Skylar had the camera out already and we were able to get some footage of him. He just looked at us. Must be used to hikers and stuff up here. But heavy buck, three by four, super pretty. Just an awesome encounter. We're gonna go check out another section of the unit tomorrow and see what we can turn up. So far, so good. We've seen a lot of bucks. So. so we just barely glassed up on this basin. You can barely see a little teeny piece of it from the bottom where we're at. And I glassed up a group of five bucks. And we pulled up the scope and they just barely walked out of sight. This one's a big buck. Is he? Oh yeah. How so big? Heavy. Looks like he has a giant body and is old. Looks heavy and gnarly. He doesn't have the biggest forks in the world, but he's wide and heavy, framey. We're a long ways away though, so he's a cool buck. How big? I don't know. Might have to crop in this video at home to <laughs> get a better look at him. He's pretty big though. Oh yeah. I mean, he might not be big enough for you, but he's cool. 
this morning we found a pretty nice bachelor group of bucks. There was two bucks in there that looked like they were pretty big. Definitely worth checking out on the hunt. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. This place is big, steep, nasty, and beautiful mule deer country. Get the clearance. Here we go. Okay, you should be able to just go now. After a few little sketchy moments on the road, we made it up here to this big pass where we could see a lot of country um, where we wanted to be. We're going to glass all this stuff in front of us for a minute and then we're going to go back behind us and glass it. When we came up top, there was actually a buck right below us. He's just a little two point. He's just sitting there like 150 yards. There's a couple more bucks across here. And so far that's it. It's been pretty slow at night. It's full moon, so it's expected. That's nuts. I don't know if I've ever seen that many in the mountains before. Really? That's a lot. It's over a hundred. It's amazing how they just run up that stuff. I know, it sounds like an avalanche of all of them running. We made it up to our basin this morning and we saw that one group of bucks earlier, but so far that's it other than a few big groups of elk and a couple little bucks. But we're actually at a trailhead I've been really wanting to explore. I found this basin through my, my Onyx maps and we found this trail system here and we used it to get here and figure out where we're at so we're gonna follow that up in and see if it looks as good as it does on the computer We made it to the top. The air is super thin here. It's absolutely killing me. I am not in shape for this right now. So we made it to the top and um, I'm gonna, we can overlook this super pretty hidden basin back in here. And there's one more basin farther in that we found on Onyx that Skylar's gonna go in and check out. I'm gonna sit here and glass some of these farther ridges with the scope. See if I can turn anything up. It's probably about 8 30, 9 o'clock right now in the morning. So everything's probably bedded up, but could be still some stuff standing up, moving around. So I'm gonna tear it apart with the scope and see what I can find. Skylar's crossing over the basin right now and is gonna pop over the other side and see what it looks like. And then we will have effectively seen most of the unit. And I feel really good about the hunt coming up. I'm so excited, it's gonna be awesome.
This is most of what we're taking. The rest of it's already in the truck. I think we're about ready to hit the road. tonight at this little hotel and all of our gear had to bring it in I love it day two and we just spent the morning glass glassing that same stuff as last night but the sun came up and is in our eyes now so we decided to shoot the muzzy while we're at 12,000 feet and I just wanted to get comfortable check my zero that kind of thing so anyways we're gonna go back to our cabin pack up and get ready to go ride the bikes and we're gonna go pack into our spot and get in there tonight so stay tuned Quick break in the action, just wanted to hop on here real quick and tell you about something we've just created. Uh, whether you're brand new to hunting or you're just wanting to find more success, we've actually created a free resource for you guys and we really think it'll help you tremendously. So check it out, link in description as well as pinned in the top comment. Let's get back to the video. We just barely headed up this canyon and the side by side. We were trying to make it up to our trailhead, but the road is totally snowed in. It looks gnarly. It's kind of on a north face. So we're gonna have to dump the bikes and head up the snowy road and see what these bikes can do. I have an hour until dark, so we are busting butt to get up there. Hopefully we get up there before dark and we'll set up camp. It's gonna be an adventure, that's for sure. What assist do you have it in? I'm on too. <sighs> that road was worse than we thought. It's buried in snow, but we've been able to ride in a couple patches here and there, but we've mostly been pushing them. Thankfully they have a button that's called walk assist. Push the button and it just spins for like one mile an hour. So you don't have to lug them all the way up here, but We've been busting our butt to get up this road. We're about to the top, but it's getting dark. It's taken us forever. The air's thin up here and packs are heavy. It's the makings of a good adventure. A little bit farther to go and then we're gonna crest over the top, head down, and that's when we get to our original trailhead we were supposed to start at with the bikes. But hopefully we get in there a ways in the light and can plan a good camping spot tonight and get settled in and be ready for the morning glass. Find us a big old buck. We've had quite the night. We got to the road we wanted to get to and on the side by side, but it was completely snowed in. So we had to bring the e-bikes and we ended up having to walk them in a long ways because the snow was so deep and we're pretty beat, so we're just gonna pop the tent up right here tonight. We may end up moving it tomorrow, but we're getting in here a lot later than we thought. But we'll wake up early and climb up onto this point. It's quite a ways up there, but get the morning glass and see what we can turn up. Tent coming out. Let's get going on that, I guess. Well, 
it's freezing cold. We didn't put our tent in a great spot last night. Neither one of us slept, but it's first light, so we're getting rounded up, getting ready to go. We're gonna head up to the top. And there's a couple basins we can see into, so hopefully we can get there in time. And deer are moving pretty decent this morning, so let's see what happens. All right, we're about halfway up to our glassing point. We stopped, had some breakfast, and kind of dried out our socks. We're gonna head up these steep peaks, get to the tops, and run the tops the rest of the day and check out these basins. But last night was absolutely brutal. It was so cold. We put our tent right on top of some snow, which we should not have done. I was so cold all night. I didn't sleep at all. We're at 12,000 feet right now and you just work a little bit harder for everything up here but that's the name of the game we've been seeing deer tracks all over in this stuff and it's just a matter of time before we run into some bucks we need to get up on our glassing point though first and we're gonna spend the whole day up there and hopefully turn us up a big buck so let's do it Alright, we just made it back to camp. Cole's a little worn out. But this has been home the last three days. We really haven't been seeing the numbers of deer we'd like to see, the numbers we saw in here this summer. So I think we're gonna pack up, try a new spot tonight. We saw about eight or nine deer today. We didn't see a single deer yesterday. There was a ton of deer in here this summer. So we're wondering if all this snow maybe pushed out a bunch of the deer or at least made them move. So we're gonna relocate, try somewhere else tonight and see what happens. We're gonna keep looking and stay positive and hopefully find out where the bucks are hanging out. So stay tuned. If Nicole will wake up. It's good to see some bugs. Day six, and we haven't been having much.
much luck. We've been looking up high mostly for the deer that we found this summer in the high country, but we're thinking the snow, the early snowstorm, um, pushed everything down into the timber. It's been really, really tough. We've been hearing the same reports from everybody else with muzzleloader tags right now. It's just a tough time of year to hunt after that snowstorm. It screwed everybody up. So today we are switching gears a little bit and headed to a different spot that we scouted this summer. If we see anything from there, um, it's going to be some nasty, gnarly, steep hikes, but we're ready to go and do whatever it takes to get a big buck. That's a big freaking deer. Like a big deer. His left side is big. What does he look like? I've only seen him in He's my tent. He's a big typical. With the giant backs? Giant backs. He's 190 all day. He's he's framey. That's a big freaking deer. He's framey though. He has three, four inch eye guards. That's a big buck, babe. I know it is. He looks like a freaking elk on the skyline right now. He's a tank. See, I don't know if he's going over the ridge or if he's just going into that little saddle. I think he is going down into the saddle because those other bucks are clear down below him. What a cool look, too. Boxy. It's a big sucker. No, he's a freaking stud. We need to get up there and kill him right now. As you saw, we found a giant buck. And I'm a complete idiot this morning, forgot to grab any food. Um, but this buck is way on top of the mountain, like way above Timberline. We haven't seen hardly any bucks above Timberline this week, but he's way up there. So we're gonna have to climb clear to one of the tallest peaks on the mountain almost um, to get above him. But anyways, forgot all the food. So I buzzed back down here to the truck, left Nicole on the mountain so she could watch him. I'm gonna grab that and we're gonna go kill a giant buck. So we think we're gonna have to gain 1,500 to 2,000 feet in elevation. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a grind. Yeah, so we got a long ways to go, um, but I got my lucky hat on right here. If you want one for yourself, head over to skynighthunting.com. Link below. Link below, right here. And we're gonna go kill a giant. Let's do giant it. Giant backs. Big old frame. Huge eye guards. One small front, but who cares? Giant eye guards. He's a freaking stud. And possibly in the velvet, which is like my yeah, dream. He looks like he's velvet, and he's by far the biggest buck we've seen on this unit. So let's, let's make go. it happen. Yeah, let's do it. We're wasting time. Let's get after it. So we just barely uh, got over here and we peeked over the ridge thinking that he might have crossed right here and didn't recognize any of the landmarks, got looking at our onyx and we completely misjudged the ridge he was on. He's a whole nother one ridge over and there's private chunks all over it and he's probably bedded on a little private chunk right now. The public cuts into it. And the ridge top is public, so if he crosses back onto our side, he'll be on public land. But we've looked at it, looked at the maps, talked it over, and we're going to side hill across this basin very quietly and just get up there on the public as deep into the middle of the private that we can in the public section and just see what it looks like. Maybe get lucky, peek over the top, and maybe he's bedded on the little public section. 
we busted butt to get up here. It took us three hours to get up here, and we're at elevation, so we're going to go see what we can see while we're up here and make the most of it. Good morning, everybody. Um, I never really got a chance to recap what happened last night. Um, some crazy things went down and yeah, so basically we glassed up this big buck yesterday morning and we knew he was a big shooter, 190 plus. Um, we went in after him. It took us three hours to get to the top of where we thought he was. We got up there. We glassed him up 20 yards 
off of public onto the private bedded. So we snuck in on him, it's last light. Uh, we're on the very edge of where we could possibly shoot him and he's just barely out of reach from us. So I sat there and watched him and watched him, glassed him and just couldn't believe he's on this little tiny skinny piece of private surrounded by public just bedded in the worst possible spot if he would have moved at all i could have killed him but it just didn't work out he got up we have footage of him he stood up looked at us didn't know what we were he was confused he even stepped towards us a little bit he just had no idea what we were and so then he kind of bounded off a little bit he wasn't too spooked but <sighs> that was freaking tough it took us all day to get in there probably one of the most physically demanding stalks I've ever done. And then after that, it was two hours out in the dark, climbing down off, losing 3,000 feet in elevation through rocky, nasty basins. It was a rough night, but super amazing experience. I'm, if I don't kill a buck on this hunt, that was unreal just being close to that thing. Dang it. But anyways, we're back at it this morning. We're glassing, trying to see if we can turn him up from distance. Haven't seen him yet. We found another group of little bucks that he was just below yesterday. So no luck. We're hoping we didn't blow him out of the country, but I don't think we did. I don't think he knew what was going on or what we were or anything. So we're going to work hard, grind these last three days out and see if we can make it happen on another big buck. What is it? It might be our buck. I can't tell. It kind of looks like a tree point, but it has big eye guards. It's hard horn. Shooter. Last up, our hard horn buck we've been seeing in here since we found that big buck a few days ago, two days ago. This buck and another 170 typical velvet buck has been in the same basin the whole time. He's turned up that hard horn buck from this morning. He moved a little bit over and bedded in a rock slide underneath some cliffs, and he just barely stood up and is moving around. So hopefully. The big boy was somewhere nearby and we just couldn't find him because he bedded um, before we got here before light. That could always be a possibility, but we're hoping he comes out tonight. We can find him and if he's close enough, hopefully go after him, but got to find him first. Hopefully he's still here. It's the second to last morning of the hunt and we hiked back up in across from this basin where we found that big buck two days ago. And we've been glassing it the last two days with no luck. We've found the same bucks that were kind of on the same ridge as him. The day we found him, we've glassed him up every single day. And this morning we found that hard horn buck and the velvet buck and a handful of does in here. But no big buck, so we're going to glass for another minute. And then while it's still prime time, we're going to head back and see if we can turn up him in a different basin see if we can get a better look at the back side of this basin or check out and see if we can find some other bucks but it's not looking like he's in this basin anymore at least, at least i mean he could be he could be bedded in here that buck we just watched the hard horn buck just barely bedded and it's still fairly early so he could definitely have bedded somewhere in here we can't see him but we haven't been able to turn him up, so we're going to have to just move on and try to find something that's huntable today because we're getting down to the wire here. We've only got today and tomorrow, and then that's it. The hunt's over. So we got to make something happen. So we're just up here. It's the last morning. 
us in the same basin again. And we actually just found a new bug that we haven't seen yet. Pretty cool bug, really tall. Just kind of different, kind of a cool character bug. But anyways, giant back forks, giant twos. Um, we're going to kind of watch him, see where he goes. And decide whether still looking for our big buck, so stay tuned. Yeah, we'll see where he goes. I bet he goes over into that clump of trees. It's the last day, and no sign of our big buck in this basin. It's been decided we're going after that big buck with the big backs and we've been glassing for him for the last few hours haven't been able to find him but we have six or seven hours left of daylight so we're just going to go in make it happen today's the last day of the hunt so we have to get aggressive and figure out where he's at get him killed before dark or else it's all over so he's a freaking sweet buck huge back forks flares out wide on the back end. Kind of the plan here is we saw him feeding across a basin and that's when we left to go glass somewhere else for the morning but we think he bedded just out of sight from us in a little patch of trees. So we're going to sneak down our glassing point, hit the bottom, go up one of the chutes where is right across from his patch of trees and we're hoping to get a little bit of elevation so we can glass down on his trees and hopefully turn him up right there bedded and shoot him at 150 yards or so. We're hoping we're pretty close, so that's the plan. It's about noon. Thermals are blowing down the hill right now because it's kind of cold and windy, so wind is good for going up at him. And let's go do this. It's the last day, bottom of the ninth. Let's get it done. He's the one coming out. Meh. Reload, you hit him. That's bad. Oh, he's going down.
don't reload. You're good. So we are sneaking up this chute and we are gonna keep going another hundred yards and go over the edge and peek onto this side hill where we thought they were bedded. And freaking they pop out <coughs> like 50 yards in front of us. We see one stand up out of its bed in some little jack pines. And we recognize them as one in the group. And so I hurry, had a yard sale and threw everything I had off and got the gun set up. Did and you notice our other velvet buck was hard horn now? Really? Yeah. So he rubbed, All red. He rubbed just barely. Mm -hmm. So anyways, they sprung up and we knew it was the buck that was in his group. So I got set up on the bipod, got the gun down and and ready to go and then sure enough we see the big frame velvet buck come out from behind him with his big back forks and we can see him they, they aren't sure what we are so they're kind of just walking they're spooked for sure so they're starting to run and then we see their horns at the top of these pines starting to show and we see the tips of them and there's a small opening and i'm set up on it because i know they're going to pass through it skylar's like second buck coming through get ready he came through the opening skylar stopped him and i shot it was kind of wild, I didn't make a great shot on him, but it put him down and we got a quick follow-up shot. He rolled down the hill like 20 yards, probably shredded his velvet, but he's right up here. We're walking up on him right now. Heck of a last day buck though. I'm stoked to not be eating tag soup on this hunt. We've absolutely worked our butts off to get a buck here and things didn't work out early on, but dang, that was exciting. I'm shaking pretty hard, so let's go up and look at this thing. And it looks like it went out his back leg. That first shot. Went in. It went in. He was quartered away. Oh, he looked broadside to me. It but was it all, came out. It was all a flash. It came out right here, so really, not a bad shot. He was gonna die. It happened fast. So this is pretty crazy. We're moving him around right now, getting him set up for pictures, and his neck has a fresh bullet hole in it from probably yesterday. Maybe that's why this buck Couple bumped into the ago. canyon. Yesterday, the day before, not very old, but we think this is probably why he is in our basin today. Someone must have shot him earlier on in the hunt. This happened to me last year too, my muzzleloader buck, same thing, it had a bullet hole in his neck from a muzzleloader. <laughs> so I guess I just have a weird thing for bucks with bullet holes in their neck. Let me flip this around and show you guys. So here it is, you can see it has a graze mark and then it went into his neck right here might even can like see the bullet I'm not sure but it's scabbed over a little bit so it's not mine so we did this guy a favor How you feeling? <laughs> feeling the burn. We're getting close. 
And that is a wrap for this hunt. Thank you guys so much for following along. Um, if you haven't already, make sure to like this video, subscribe, stay watching for the next episodes, and see you next time.